how do you keep upbeat and positive? Um, I don't think anybody does it all the time. But what you need to do is get into a habit of being able to pick yourself back up when you sort of kick down or fall down or have everything fall apart. What I normally find for myself is if it's been one of those frustrating things like dealing with immigration, it's on a timeline that you cannot alter. Um, you've got two options. You can either not think about it or you need to get through the time as quick as possible. So I might have a couple of lazy days because normally I've been working up to that um, quite a lot, making sure everything's prepped and stuff, long nights, etc. Make sure all the paperwork and everything's there, extra bits and pieces to keep everyone happy. So when it's actually gone into process, I might say, right, I'm going to have a few days of just doing nothing or very little or doing something productive but normally I recommend not doing something too productive because you've normally got a bit of burnout um, so having a couple of days of reading books and just lounging around the house is normally pretty good but the other side of this being if you're experiencing burnout and this is why I'm bringing this video up in the first place you need to step back the first thing you need to do is analyze what's wrong. Um, normally, burnout is caused by overthinking, overcomplications, um, problems financially, relationship, etc., etc. First bit of advice on that is life will still go on. Do not worry about it. You will find a solution. People generally do. The next bit is you need to deal with the immediate issues, which is you're experiencing burnout. So the first thing is getting enough rest. Making sure you're getting the right food, because a lot of people eat a lot of crap. Um, introduce some healthier stuff into your diet. You'll feel better after about, some people a couple of days, some people a month, but generally you feel much healthier. I mean, here in Spain, I've cut my wine consumption down considerably um, because we were drinking wine quite regular because it was cheap but I'm now I've had one well three glasses of wine in two months so you know it's but do I feel worse for it not really do I feel healthier the answer is no why because we're getting over that winter period I'm now in the summer period the bike's coming out now that's when I'll start to feel a bit better for it because I'll start burning off that winter fat. Um, the other side of this is getting enough vitamin D, which gets onto a bit of the cycling. Go out and do something else, something that just relaxes. This is why you're hearing a lot, of, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's an American thing as well, uh, but in the UK, we walk a lot. We'll go out for a walk. It's to do with a bit of time alone to actually think about things and analyse or just do nothing, relax. It's why fishing, a lot of people fish, not because of catching fish, where people go, what's the point of going fishing, you never catch anything. No, it's to get away from you. <laughs> it's actually to sit there and not be bothered by people. In the UK, there's this existence of sheds, garden sheds are where a lot of men go and sit and have their own little space because it detaches them from everything else. These things do exist because they're therapy in some ways. <laughs> but the whole point is you need to understand that if you're experiencing burnout, you need to deal with the symptoms and make the change. I find I get frustrated with not being listened to work-wise because when I see a disaster coming and I warn people and they're going, it's none of your business, I'm like, it is my business because I want it to run right. You know, at the end of the day, a failure for the business is a failure for everyone. And even though it's got nothing to do with it whatsoever, I still get involved and go, come on, we can, we can sort this out. Um, but the, the, that's where I get some frustrations. Now, somebody else brought up about, oh, about getting rich. I could, you know, the thing for me, life is not about money. And this is where a lot of people, I think, do actually go wrong because money is how you purchase things. Money is a piece of paper. It's actually just something that says the banks will give the bearer X, you know, it has the value of X. It's a piece of paper. 
I'd much rather have a lump of gold in my hand that's actually worth something. It's why there's so much investment in property, because it's a physical object. But the banks cottoned on to that and artificially inflate the market because they make money on the debts, but also hide their debts. So you need to understand that I have no hang up with money whatsoever. The main thing for me is sustainability, and that's why I stress sustainability. I make money every month because I invested time several years ago when I was sat in the Philippines um, doing bits and pieces and now have that money still continuously coming in. I'm not getting rich, but if I did get rich, would it make any difference? Probably not. The money would be sat in the bank because if you're reaching where you want to be in life, it doesn't revolve around creating headaches for yourself. Um, I know a lot of business people. Um, I mean, like the biggest contract I've dealt with myself was 80 million pounds. The reality here is it ties up your time. You're tied up to a country, you're tied up to a company. I don't want any, any of that. I can get that anytime I want. Next week, there is several meetings going on relating to software I'm developing. Those meetings will generate contracts of at least £300,000 each. The ability for me to go and earn £10,000 £10, a month is easily achievable just on the back of that software. Because this is the other side of things. I'm setting up a little world of my own where... I can sit here managing stuff in the UK or anywhere else on the planet because that's what I want to be doing because if I've got it on a laptop, I can do it here in Spain, I can do it in Portugal, I can do it in Gibraltar, Brussels, Germany, Holland, wherever. It doesn't matter. That's the lifestyle I want. Um, I've recently been added to a group called the... Uh, laptop i think it's called the life laptop lifestyle that is exactly the people in the same mindset it's not a, it's nothing to do with um not working it's to do with disconnecting the boundaries that are often put on us it's like living here in spain and commuting to the uk i'm already saving money with that commute so bear in mind you need to analyze your own life and see what is going right and what's going wrong. This is still goes back to what this original video is, even though it's gone off on a tangent a bit, that I analyze what's working and what isn't consistently, uh, constantly and consistently. Um, I sit there and go, okay, this is consistently working or this is consistently a pain in the backside, um, and then go and change it. You need to do it. It's, it's how you avoid burnout because I know in the Philippines, if you're in my sort of age group with no pension, um, I have a state pension available to me when I eventually retire in the UK. But the, the fact is I'm not really into pensions at all. Um, I don't see the value in them. They, um, when I say that, I mean the value in them. You're better off with the money in your own investments to actually generate more come, uh, money because you haven't got these people siphoning off everything in fees and everything else for themselves. Um, it's just, this is why the deregulations in the UK is sort of had the insurance companies going, oh my God, because it's mainly insurance that do the investments as well. So they're sort of like, oh, we like managing people's pensions because even if we lose money, we still get our fees. Um, but anyway you need to just turn around and say, right, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to get it right? How am I going to get back on track? And like I said, do you need a rest day? Have a rest day. Because at the end of the day, the problems are still going to be there tomorrow. You're not going to fix them today. So don't worry about them today. Relax, get yourself back in order, and then hit them tomorrow. For myself, I've always found that the easiest way of doing it, but also it, you've got to keep your stress levels down. Um, because stress doesn't help anybody. But also, over a period of time, it can cause deterioration of the person, which isn't healthy at all. And even if you're financially in severe trouble, the banks don't appreciate people that 
have mental breakdowns and stuff because they get to a point where they're not going to pay it. They go bankrupt. They go insolvent. They go to the point where they're not even recovering mentally. So from my point of view, I just say get yourself in order. Get yourself under control. Find a solution. And a lot of solutions are right there in front of you. This is why I've done a lot of videos relating to things like the piggery, the peso peso machine, stuff like that for the Philippines, because they all make little bits of money. And I know a lot of expats are oh, yeah, but I don't need, you know, it's a lot of headache for that. The piggery on the side of a house doesn't need that much work done to it once it's set up right. Peso peso machines are automatic. The worst headache is when the computers actually go corrupt or something and you need to format and reinstall. Spending an hour in about six months to reinstall Windows or whatever it is you've got on there isn't breaking the bag and it isn't wasting your time because a lot of time in the Philippines, time is the one biggest asset everybody has, too much of often. Um, so there is always a solution. If you look for a solution, you'll find it. If you look for problems, you will find them. My best view is keep yourself healthy, keep yourself uh, self fit, keep yourself focused. But to do it, you need to look after yourself. All right, thanks for watching.